Hey everybody, Konaja here. Welcome back to Formula One 2019. We have to wrap up what was quite a great weekend in Austria. Our first podium for Alpha and Looks overall... Like one of your rivals has also been invited oh, to yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we don't care about the historic this events. Be a good opportunity <laughs> to play up your rivalry for the press oh, man. and expand your reputation. All right, Emma, get the words out. Anyway, uh, yeah, it was a great race weekend all together despite the rain and qualifying really happy with all of that and i'm excited to keep moving forward uh we need to look at the r d stuff on the car they did have two failures last time so i'm gonna redevelop that weight redistribution on chassis i'm gonna redo the front wing at gurney flap and that leaves me with 600 points my main dedication to this car's development is in the chassis I was recommended to try and buy some of these efficiency uh, uh, bonuses, and that would upgrade price reduced by 20% and failure chance reduced by 10%. Uh, unfortunately, they raised the price of those. That is now a 1,000 point thing to get. However, I am going to probably do that. This would give us another, what, 10%? Okay, so this is a 10% right there. Interesting. Oh, actually, actually, we already have a 20% reduction and a 10% reduction there because we've been, we've been really making the, the team happy. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so I have a decision here. Do I try and spend my 600 points on other things, or do I save it and try to get that 1,000 point you know, upgrade for uh, basically making it cheaper in the future to do chassis development. I don't know. At this point, there's so much simple development on the car that I feel like doing the simple development is the way to go. All of this is in downforce, and I, I don't know. I don't really understand where the flaws in this car are just yet. I'm, I'm still working on that. Um, yeah, I think for right now, I'm going to go ahead and stick with more development on the car right now. That'll be ready for Silverstone. That'll be a good one. That's already three upgrades possible for this car moving forward. After this event, if we have a lot of resource points next race weekend, I will look into getting probably this chassis upgrade. I want to try and get one of these trees filled out as soon as possible. And that would really help to have lower prices through here and less chance of failure too. That's that's also you know been a been a problem. Uh, you can buy a 500 point thing that that makes them less likely to fail, but that just seems like so much playing the lottery. I don't like to play the lottery. Okay, rambly rambly. Let's head to the next next race weekend. All right, here we are at Silverstone now. Uh, oh, sorry, I was looking at the setup. I'm starting with a, a pretty aggressive... Not actually a pretty aggressive, but a, a more rear-biased arrow setup because I know oversteer is a problem, especially through the S's here. Uh, being pretty easy with the differential stuff. Mostly standard on the, the suspension geometry. These settings are stuff that I've just picked up off of other people's setup guides. Uh, I... This is nothing unique to what I'm doing here. Uh, sus Suspension-wise, this is a track that I know prefers a soft suspension. Low ride height, it's very smooth. And then the brakes and all that stuff. The tires are pretty much standard. Let's go out for a track acclimatization okay, session. Let's update the setup. And see how it feels. I'm going to go out on the medium compound for this. Yeah, I'm going to go out for the medium compound because I'm... I'm worried, not really worried, but I'm concerned that I am not getting enough resource points, so I really want to perfect this one, if possible. I do have some very used parts on the car yet. I have not changed them over. I will do that after practice, but that shouldn't affect this program. I may, in fact, need to do that before going out to try and do the qualifying program. Silverstone is a track that I really had to come around to. I have a lot of experience around here in the various different layouts through F1, through iRacing, through uh, back in like the Trans Am days. A lot of races here at Silverstone. 
and it was one that was kind of a thorn in my side for a long time, but I've pretty well come around to like it. Probably need to be a lot more aggressive through there. This is my least favorite section right here. Unsurprisingly, it's the new section. <laughs> Why don't they never make tracks better? <laughs> Nobody ever goes in and changes the layout of a track and improves it. That, I can't think of any cases of that, can you? Prove me wrong. I'd love to know. I'm such a track historian and track design nerd. Honestly, if there was a game made that was, like, mostly about making racetracks, that would be one of the most exciting things for me. Boy, this car felt really good through there. A little bit tight out, but boy, that was... That was very encouraging, actually. We are on a string of purples. A little bit oversteer there, but not a big deal. Not a big fan of this chicane either, but... Boy, no, this... This car feels great. Hands down, best car I've ever driven at Silverstone. I don't know if the setup is just really good or what, but seriously, that was really encouraging. I'm very pleased. Also, a quick little bit of information here. All good news here. We got the aero upgrades and the chassis upgrade without any problems, finally. So, pretty big upgrade to the car here in Silverstone. Let's look at the progress history. We are kind of matching McLaren's progress. Looks like Racing Point and Haas are kind of stagnant at the moment. I definitely feel like we need to make some bigger swings with the car if we're ever going to try and get nearer to the top three. But I think we're progressing pretty well. I'm not, I'm not dissatisfied with, with us, uh, you know, kind of maintaining parity with those three and pulling away from Renault and Torosso, I believe. All right. Now, uh, now on to more practice. So I'm out here for the race strategy program, and so far so good. The car does indeed feel really, really into the track. A little bit of uh, uh, a rear sliding condition, especially on very new tires. So far the weather has been good, which, I mean, that makes sense. Why would it rain in Britain? That, that would be silly. Um, but who knows if it's going to remain that way. I think the car is really good in the middle sector there. It's just okay in sector one, and it's, I would say, maybe a little bit down over here in sector three. Just feels like, yeah, especially right there. Even though the time was coming down, um, it just feels a little uncomfortable there. Surprisingly, the car feels good at low speeds. I don't know if that's the upgrades or just the fact that this track is so smooth. I have the car slammed. It's like Stance Nation Bruff car set up because uh, when you get it that close to the ground, the arrow can just work so much better. Speaking of arrow, how, uh, how about the 2021 car model being shown? I think it's a scale model. I didn't read anything about it. I just looked at it. It, it looks like a scale model to me. Like it's not actually the... Um, Full representative size of the car. However, I do like the uh, the general shift of the shape. I really like the way the big rear diffuser tunnels look. Not that looks are everything, but to me, part of the spectacle of Formula One is that the cars look really cool. All right, I don't need to go to six there. That was a that was an older car thing. Yeah, I. I generally like the shape that it has. Now those, those previews, that's all like, here's the rule book, here's the middle of the road of the rule book. So the real cars aren't going to look exactly like that, but there's some elements from them. Oh, I really lost the nose there. There's some elements from them that you will see on the upcoming cars. And 
what I saw, I liked. And uh, with any luck, they'll actually do something. Like, they keep doing all this work to try and make racing easier, basically. They don't want the cars to be easier to drive. This isn't NASCAR. Look at NASCAR. Um, but they want to make it so when you race with somebody, the fact that you are ahead of them doesn't just completely negate your ability to pass them, uh, even if you're faster than them. And that's, I think that's a worthwhile endeavor. I think that's something worth pursuing. As much as I love NASCAR, I hate that they're doing so much basically to just make the cars easier to drive and in that hoping that that makes racing closer. That's, uh, sorry, that to me, that's not racing. Come down your hot take. Oh man, I did the qualifying program and I just missed the last turn by, uh, by, I don't know, an inch. I really missed the apex by inches. And look how close I was to an optimal time there. A 131.092 needed a 131.062. Pretty encouraging result. Car felt good in qualifying trim. Uh, another, another good looking performance out of the car for this weekend. Not somewhere I necessarily circled as somewhere the car might be great, but it's feeling good. It's time once again then for qualifying here at Silverstone on what we're hoping will be a tight contest for po For pole position, sorry. I cut you off, Crofty. Your name's Crofty, right? I'm pretty sure its name is Crofty. All right, we're gonna go to track here nice and early. Feeling really positive about qualifying today. I see no reason why we shouldn't make it out of Q1. Should make it out of Q2 and should have a pretty sporty time in Q3. The weather is threatening here in qualifying. It is calling for overcast conditions for all of qualifying. But good news, everyone! The rain will return for the race. Calling for an, an absolute washout in the race this weekend. So that makes, what, four races that will have rain so far this season? Great job, Codemasters. You, uh, you balanced that flawlessly. But we'll deal with it. We will deal with it. Let's just try and focus on a good qualifying run here today. Good qualifying runs make the team happy. And when the team's happy, I'm happy. That didn't sound very believable, did it? <laughs> it was a lie. Just want to make sure that if they were listening, they heard me say that, you know? That was a little bit wide through there. I feel like I don't even really need to stomp this lap in. I feel like our car is going to have enough pace to uh, pretty easily get through here. Just down to seventh gear here in qualifying where we have a lot of additional power on tap. Love this sequence of turns. I remember a lot of great battles with, uh, with Jolo back in the day of, of the co-op series through this section. I certainly do miss co-op being part of these games. Why they decided to remove that feature. It's been a long time, but I'm still bitter about it. That's a pretty good run through Sector 3. It was a 130.5. Fastest lap of the session so far. That should be good to get us through. I'm honestly considering that uh, I don't need to consider what I'm considering at all, because it's going to be a rain race. I was saying, I was thinking, maybe we go mediums for Q2, but that would be dumb. Very handedly did make it through Q1. Third place, Kenny down there in ninth. Pretty close in times, but uh, yeah, I think I've got something working here. One an interesting thing to note is that the AI are not using my setup. So Kimmy's not got the setup that I have in the car. So if I really hit a setup perfect, that's where I'm going to get an advantage. So I think that really balances things out because there's some times where, frankly, the AI is a little overpowered um, and I just can't keep up with what Kimmy can do. So having the ability to run a setup on the car and, you know, make some improvements to it is, is certainly 
kind of just a, a relief to that strain. I am a bit worried that I don't have enough downforce on the car for a rain race. But I'm not too concerned about it. I didn't... I didn't slim the thing out, and I wasn't running... I wasn't running really fast trap times. Ooh, I lost it there. In practice. Meaning the car wasn't going faster than everybody else down the straightaway, so others, in theory, could have even less arrow on them. One thing I do like about this track is that there's... There's more than one way to slice this pizza. Like, if you want to slice it squared, if you want to do narrow slices, if you want to make triangles, if you want to make pentagons, you can do it. Some tracks, there's just one line around the track. You stick to that line or you lose. It's fun having the options here. It's fun having the ability to, oh, I ran a little wide there. I'm still fine. Everything's cool. I'll just take a different approach. Especially through that one. A lot of different ways to get that one. At the end of the day, you just gotta cut it. This track wants to be cut. No kink shaming. 30.2! For our terrible sector one, we actually picked up time. Very... Very sporty looking car today, I must say. Alright, Hamilton. You don't have to you don't have to just like break my heart instantly. You could have waited a minute. P6 in Q2. Kimmy gets knocked out. Just barely. He's actually in really good position. If it wasn't gonna be a rain race, uh, if this was gonna be a dry race, he'd be in in really good shape. Devin Butler up there in P10, putting the Toro Rosso into Q3. A, a lot of variety in this in this Q3 session. We got a Torosso, a Haas, a McLaren, a Racing Point, and an Alpha. And uh, the only one out is basically Renault of that mid-pack battle. The sun has started to poke out a little bit here in Q3 in places. Maybe that will change the track a little bit. Let's try and really get a good lap in here. That's not a fantastic start, but doesn't really affect things too much. Let's try and get flat through here. We've done it. Flat through here, we've done it. There's the sun a little bit. That was a pretty darn good run through there. Slowly squeezing the power through there. That is such a blind entry into here. It took many, many years of racing around this track to really learn it, to be honest. It's just one of those things that's ingrained into my brain now where the actual entry to that turn is. I had to lift a little bit, but it was pretty sporty through there. I'm gonna really push it into the S's. pushed it. It definitely pushed wide a little bit, but that was a good sector time. One of the best I've had. Down to the power nicely, out of the carousel. On the place we really gotta squeeze into the power. Can we get to the 29s? We can! A 29.5! It felt good. We just had that one little bobble. Hamilton, why? <laughs> Hamilton, why do you have to do this to me? Oh, man, it's a curse. It's an absolute curse. Um, depending on how it looks, we might stick with that time. I, I don't feel like I'm going to get very much out of it from here. Boy, I'm happy with that. Fifth place. That's, uh, that's really good. We're ahead of all the mid-packs. I mean, close times here. But we did beat a Red Bull, which actually we beat both Red Bulls, which feels really good. Uh, yeah, this this feels like a, a nice positive start to the weekend. Maybe, maybe this will be the place where we have ourselves a good, solid good day, rain race. Let's have your take on it. 
I wish it wasn't gonna rain. <laughs> it's got to be a relief to qualify that far up the grid. I never expect anything else. Hard work pay off. Gives us great opportunity. Engine power. Yeah, that's sportsmanship. Doesn't really help anything. I was like looking for a chassis stuff. In the development of new parts. Power unit, reliability, aero, chassis. <laughs> Teams worked wonders. Appreciate your time. Thanks. All right, this is it for the weekend. I cannot do two races this weekend. I simply do not have time. When we just won our rivalry versus Devin Butler. Suck it, jerk face. <laughs> uh, and we're now tied. We're drawing, sorry, with Kimmy. A lot, of, a lot of good stuff here. I'm glad to have completed that rivalry before the race. We don't have to worry about the rain affecting things there. Well done. That was a good qualifying performance. Good? Fine, whatever. All right, everybody. See you tomorrow for the race.